Do you want to use Kafka? Or do you really need a message broker in queues? While they can seem similar, they have different purposes. I'm going to explain the differences so you don't end up trying to brute force some concepts and patterns on Kafka when you're better off just using a message broker. Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. I post videos on software architecture and design, as well as soon I'll have a video coming out on a Kafka and that it's not an event store. So don't miss these videos, make sure to subscribe. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So you wanna use Kafka, okay, great, but what does it actually do? So Kafka is a log, more specifically, it's a partitioned log. I'll get into the partitioning part later in this video. But how it works is I have a producer here and you could have many different producers that are sending events to our log. Basically they're appending new events to our log. So we could have many different producers and I'm just continuously appending events here. Now as time goes on, there's a retention period for these events in this log. It may be forever where messages are never removed, but there can be a retention period that after a given period of time, then subsequent messages, once they reach that threshold, are removed from the log. So with event-driven architecture, we can have many different producers sending events, appending events to our log. So we have our three events here, and our producer doesn't really know that there's any consumers at all. There could be zero, there could be many. My example here, I have two different consumers. So the first consumer can basically consume that first message from the log. Our second consumer can do the exact same thing. It could do, do them concurrently. And then from there, maybe the second consumer, it finished that first one, it can get now the second event from that log. Now the thing is, is that these events are still in the log, whether you've consumed them or not. That means that the first consumer, it has processed the first message, but there's really nothing stopping it from pulling that exact same message off again. Now this is a really important distinction to make is that just because you process an event from the log does not remove it from the log. That means that you could add a brand new consumer and start at the very beginning of the event log and process events. Or an existing consumer, if it's at a certain position within the event log, it doesn't have to stay there. It can go back because the events are still there, assuming because of the retention period that they're still there, and it could reprocess events that you've already processed. Again, the retention period is what's determining when events are potentially removed, not because you're consuming them. So this distinction is important because there's two types of messages. I've been mentioning events, and events are types of message, as well as commands. So the way commands work is a little bit different. We can have many different producers of a command that are gonna send a message to a message broker. So we have a producer sending some type of command to our message broker, to a queue, and we have a single consumer, single consumer. There will only be one, not zero, not two, one consumer for that command. And it's basically the authority to process that message, that command. So that consumer will pick up that uh, message from the queue, process it, maybe it's doing some state change, etc. but there will only ever be one consumer for a command. That means that events and commands have different purposes. Commands, their intent is to invoke behavior that could be making some state change, some mutation, there's some side effect there. Events is you're defining that something already happened. You're letting some other part of your system know something happened. The ownership is a clear distinction here, is that commands are owned by the consumer because there's only one consumer. With events, they're owned by the publisher. Who's publishing the event is the one that owns that, that definition, that schema. For consumers, a command, there's only one consumer. For events, there's many different consumers or none. Who sends a command? There could be many different publishers, many different senders. The events, it's just that single logical boundary that's gonna be a publisher, the one that owns it. And then again, naming here is how you name these things, less important for this video, but generally commands are gonna be in the form of kind of a verb and a noun, and events are gonna be in the past tense. Now, if you have commands or you want to use commands as a way to invoke behavior within some particular boundary, but you're using something like an event log, well, how do you make an event a command? Now, something like this, which I'm not advocating, I don't think this makes any sense based on what I just said, which is, it's called a command event, which are events often fall into one of two categories, 
messages and commands. Based off what I just said, this does not make any sense at all. Messages are events or commands, but you can see how you go down this road of kind of inventing a command event when all you really have is an event log and everything's an event, how do you perform commands? You can't, you need a message broker. Now this is where a message broker differs from Kafka and our log, is that when we have a producer send a message to our queue, to our message broker, and we have a consumer pick up that message and process it, what it's ultimately gonna do, it's gonna tell the broker and it's gonna acknowledge that it's actually successfully processed the message. Once that's occurred, that message is then removed from our queue, from our broker. Now this applies to whether we just have a queue, what it applies to as well as if we have, we're doing pub sub and we have topics. If you have a consumer group that processes a message, an event from a topic, ultimately a queue, that it's still removed once you acknowledge that you've processed it. That means that if you add a new consumer later, there's no way to get these existing events that were published like we can with an event log. Another difference is how you scale. Now they both apply the concept of the competing consumers pattern, but a little bit differently here. So with a broker typically, what this allows you to do is to process more messages concurrently. So you have kind of first in, first out uh, guarantees with a queue or most that you're using. And that means that you're gonna be able to uh, consume a message or pull out a message out of the queue in the same order that it was sent to the, to the queue, to the broker. But that does not necessarily mean that you're gonna process them in the same order and that's because of competing consumers. It's kind of the trade-off here is that you are able to process messages concurrently. So as an example, we have two messages, uh, two consumers within a consumer group and they're pulling messages off the exact same queue. So we have our producer, or it could be many different producers, and there's two messages in our queue. What can happen right now is that both consumers, the first consumer will get the first message, and then the second consumer will get the second message. So we're pulling them off in order, but we could be processing them concurrently. And this can have many great benefits in terms of just adding more throughput, but there is a kind of a cost here with how you're ordering and if you're expecting to process messages in order. Now at the beginning, I mentioned that Kafka is a partitioned log, and this actually has its benefits when we're talking about ordering, but it also has some downsides as well. So in this case, in terms of competing consumers, it applies this pattern, but to an individual partition, there can only be one consumer. So in my example, I have a consumer group of two different consumers, but you can only have a partition as I'm outlining kind of at the top and bottom of what looks like my, my log there in the middle, is that there can only be one consumer per partition. So that means that as we're producing messages, say I put this on partition zero, and then I produce another message and I put it on partition one, and we say I have the first consumer at the top, say it's responsible for the, the partition zero, the first one at the top, then it's gonna consume that message. The bottom consumer is gonna consume the message from partition one, the second one. So while you can expand this out, this makes you have to decide where you're publishing message to and what partitions you're part, uh, publishing them to. So it's not just as easy as adding more consumers. If you're dumping a whole lot of messages and you have a lot of messages going to a, part a particular partition, you're only gonna ever have one consumer able to process one at a time. So do you want a partitioned event log or do you really want a message broker in queues? Hopefully this video illustrated some of the differences because there's many more, but there's a lot of confusion on trying to use something like Kafka when you really want a message broker. Specifically, if you're doing something like orchestration that I've shown in other videos where you're consuming events and then sending commands to other logical boundaries to execute some long running business process and workflow. Same thing goes with competing consumers. Understand the differences between how they're gonna work with something like Kafka and partitions and how cons competing consumers are gonna work with a message broker in queues. Because you can get in a lot of trouble if you're trying to do it with an event log and something like a partition event log like Kafka where you have a single consumer per partition. That's not to say that I'm against Kafka, I'm not. I think in the right situation, it makes a lot of sense. The biggest draw here to me is that you have events that are persisted potentially forever 
or again, depending um, on that window of time that you allow them to be there, that retention period. But this is a lot, this could be really good for data distribution, um, analytics, these types of things where you can add new consumers and start from the beginning of the log and process that data. But when we're talking about kind of business events and things that you want to occur, uh, or business concepts that you want to occur, and again, they're part of workflow, generally there's, we're talking about two things here. We're talking about commands specifically and events that are derived from those things that have happened. In those places, I'd say you, more often than not, you're gonna be wanting me to look at a message broker, not a partition event log like Kafka. Now they're not mutually exclusive. You could be, if you have the need, be using a message broker and Kafka. So be it if you fit into that mold where you need these two different things. But again, my biggest thing with this video is don't go try using Kafka and shoving something like workflow in command events, whatever that is, uh, when you really just want a message broker. Thanks to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. They get access to a private Discord server where you can communicate with other like-minded developers about software architecture and design. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.